Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Each Tucker. Damn it. Man. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. It's like Jesus going into the temple. He's like, I got a whip. <laughs> Get out. Get, Get out. out. The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood in his toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like get, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy. Holy sh- too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't believe it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it just, it's. It's you pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been a soup when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> the story. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Just like five minutes before I was supposed to come on, I realized I went into the basement to move the fans around. Uh, You can hear me today, right? I'm not muted or anything. And because we had a flood because of the well problem, which I don't even know what the problem is yet. But we thought it was because we didn't turn off the power to the uh, pump. So we turned the power off 
Mr. Fox cleans it all up, gets the fans going. And I was supposed to check the fans every couple hours, he said. So I run downstairs right before the stream to move the fans around and I'm standing in water again. And the, the pipe that goes from the wall, you know, outside is leaking again. So sorry, sorry for the extra long intro, but <laughs> right after I started the first intro, my husband called to say, go run downstairs and do this thing. He's on his way here to take care, try and take care of it. Um, and so I was like running to do what he told me to do. And then I pushed the next one because I was all out of breath. Sorry. Um, and my plumber is at a class today and he can't get here until after class is over. So I don't know what time he's coming. Mm. I've already called them, but you know, anyway, welcome to the show. I don't know how long I'll have if other, um, emergencies arise. <laughs> okay. But what we're going to do today is get into the new filings in the Owens v. Eckerd case. Now, if you missed it last night, Tug and I did, Tug, who's that umbrella guy, we did a dramatic reading of, wait, hold on. Hold, please. Okay. Um, we did a dramatic reading of the deposition transcript that is available in the, <laughs> the documents that I'm going to read. And I do want to play a little bit of that for you because it was so funny. I took some clips. Hold on a second. Uh, what did I do with them is the question. If you are not subscribed to that umbrella guy, you really should be. Um, he is hilarious. And I did my best Laura Owens impression last night. Let's see, how do I get to my clips again? Oh, yeah, there they are. All right, here we go. My best Laura Owens impression is my vocal fry. Vocal fry. It was a little bit tough because both of our sets of our kids decided to bother us at like one after the next. There was like about a half an hour in between when we started reading the deposition to when uh, <laughs> the kids interrupted us. And then for like a half hour, it was his kids, then my kids, then back to his kids, then my kids again. It was kind of funny. So I did put timestamps in the uh, in the comments so you can skip past the child interruptions. Um, but let me play you a clip here because this is so funny. Uh... Oh. I'm totally confused here. <laughs> I'll give you a chance here to explain how there is a Scottsdale medical imaging ultrasound that you claim came from a mission Viejo. There is not. Well, this was the actually taken in Mission Viejo. This was not taken at Smile. Why does it say Smile on it? Oh, I did change the top of that from Planned Parenthood to Smile because I didn't want him to contact the doctor. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> what, a, what an excuse. I'm showing, I'm showing you real clearly bait stamp. 0183. It's an ultrasound image that you are admitting to having changed information on. Is that true? Just the top left. Yes, the location. I'm going to ask the question again. <laughs> so there's that one. Like, and we do the whole thing, uh, but it does take us a while to get through it. Here's another one that's pretty funny. You originally said. You just changed and added the word smile. But now under oath, you were saying you added your name to it too, correct? Correct. And your date of birth? Yeah, I changed the top. My date of birth, actually, they, they I think they may have had my date of birth. They might have had my date of birth there. <laughs> they may have had that. If you were to get the record, they may have my date of birth because they did ask my age. This is wild. When you submit <laughs> records to the court, you understand that you're signing a verification with them and that there's an ex expectation of honesty. Yes. And I don't believe this was ever submitted to court. That was another lie. And we're going to get into it. So I will link um, this. Uh, where should I put it? I'll put it in the chat. I don't have the other chats open right now. Tug stream last night. We talked about a ton of different stuff last night. We were supposed to talk about what the hails and we only did a little bit. 
and we were like talking about serial killers and I don't know, it went off the rails, but it was fun. So make sure that you check that out. There is the link for you in the YouTube chat. Rumble, how you doing over there? Here it is in the Rumble chat. Tug stream. There you go. And locals, there's a live chat on locals. The Wednesday live chat is, it is open. Is it hopping? I don't know. I'm going to go in there and see. How you guys doing in here? Yeah, they're in there. <laughs> I will drop the link for you guys in there as well. MeganFox.Locals.com. It's fun in there. You should really be following me there. And we we have a lot of fun there. All right, let me pull up the motion. We're going to get started reading it. We may have some a visitor or two today. I'm not sure. I sent out the link, uh, but I don't know who's going to be able to make it. All right, let's see. All right, let's start going through this, shall we? And uh, before we do that, let me get the banner going. In case you don't want to send a super chat to support the show, you can always send tips on Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, um, or just make sure you hit that like button and subscribe because that's totally free and it supports the show. You can also clickety-click on all my articles on pjmedia.com, which also supports the show. Um, and if you like my t-shirt, you can go and get one because uh, I have them in the merch store. It says, oh, for Fox sake, and there's tons of them in there. Sweatshirts, mugs, t-shirts uh, in lots of different colors. You can get one, and there's a bunch of different ones too. Um, all right, here we go. In the Superior Court of the State of Arizona, in and for the County of Maricopa, this is a motion for joint hearing pursuant to Rule 5A4. Defendant Respondent Clayton Eckert, by and through counsel, undersigned and pursuant to Rule 5A4. Oh, by the way, there is breaking news. Where's my breaking news button? There is breaking news in the Laura Owens v. Clayton Eckert case. Laura Owens is on her 13th attorney. That's correct. 13th attorney, folks. She has a new attorney. His name is David Gringas. Uh, he is a more of a civil rights attorney. Uh, but he has been in, entered into court as her new attorney, and we'll see how that goes. I wonder if he has done any research on this case. I guess we will find out. All right, lucky number 13. We call it, isn't that the baker's dozen? <laughs> All right. Uh, files this motion for a joint hearing. As and for his motion, defendant respondent states as follows. One, contemporaneous with this filing, defendant respondent has filed his motion for relief from judgment based on fraud, seeking redress in the underlying order of protection cause of action. Exhibit one. Okay, so what he's saying is this needs to be overturned. She got a fraudulent order of protection against me, and I want it, I want you to look at it. And I want it overturned because it was based on fraud. <laughs> Buy 12 attorneys, get the 13th free. <laughs> Good one, boots on the ground. An identical matter regarding similar concerns of fraudulent conduct involving fabricated pregnancies and doctored medical evidence by petitioner plaintiff is currently pending before Judge Mata. She lied. With a final trial set for June 10th. Rule 5A4 of Arizona Rules of Family Law Procedure provides that although the court may not consolidate a case involving an order of protection with a family law case, it may conduct a joint hearing. Hmm. I see. So they can't consolidate the case into one, but they can have a joint hearing because they're related, I guess. Defendant respondent maintains the proper remedy is for judge duty. Yeah, that's really the judge's name, Judge Duty. <laughs> to immediately dismiss the order of protection obtained by fraud as set forth in the contemporaneous motion for relief from judgment based on fraud. In the interest of judicial economy, should the order of protection not be dismissed based on defendant's motion for relief from judgment based on fraud, Judge Mata's division should conduct a joint hearing. Okay, so basically, if you don't dismiss it immediately, then it should go in front of Judge Mata and be heard at the same time as the June 10th case. Interesting. Very, very interesting. 
Yeah, MG agreed. That new attorney better get ready to get shucked over by Laura. I know. Sometimes I wish I could. The chat is so funny. Sometimes I wish I could quit talking and just <laughs> pay attention in the chat. I want to be one of you. Brad's in a meeting right now, or he would be here. Hopefully he'll get here after his meeting. Um, wherefore, respondent defendant respectfully requests that the court conduct a joint hearing pursuant to Rule 5A4 if the protective order is not dismissed based on fraud. Order such further relief as the court deems just. And that is signed. Okay, let's go to Exhibit 1. Exhibit 1, though, was cut out or redacted, I think, by the clerk. Because... That Exhibit 1 was supposed to be the Order of Protection, but it is not here. Just the page that says Exhibit 1 is here, but the Order of Protection is not here. So I have a feeling it was redacted from the court. And I, I wish it hadn't been, because I would like to really see the things she alleged in it. And it feels like it would be relevant to his case if she filed another thing in court full of lies. You know, how is that not relevant? And why is it protected is the question. Hmm. All right. What's with the corn jokes? I don't get it. What's with all the shuckle up, shucking? What, what is going on? I've missed something. What, what did I miss? She's medium corn. Where are these jokes coming from? Someone needs to fill me in. <laughs> Brad is in a meeting about the meeting they had about the previous meeting. That's probably really true. Um, what am I missing? And now you're just making fun of me because I don't know about the corn. Watch DUI guy when last night. MG show last night. Okay, I guess I have to catch up. I was sleeping. Actually, I wasn't. I was on with Tug. <sighs> from this morning. Wait, so which one am I supposed to watch? MG last night or DUI guy this morning? Ask Larry. All right. I feel like I'm left out. I'm left out of the joke. It's not fair. <laughs> She's cornfused. I'm very cornfused. <laughs> ah, okay. You guys are both split on this. Some of you say this morning and a bunch of you say last night. Yes, I was sleeping with my heating pad is absolutely correct. All right. All right. Anyway, I'm moving on. Uh, the motion for relief from judgment based on fraud assigned to the Honorable Ju John Duty. John Duty. If my name was John Duty, I would change it immediately. All right. Defendant Clayton Eckert. By and through counsel undersigned and pursuant to Rule 2, Arizona Rules of Protective Order Procedure, which invokes Rule 60B3, Arizona Rule, Rules of Civil Procedure ARCP, or in the alternative, Rule 85D3, Arizona Rules of Family Law Procedure hereby files this motion for relief from judgment on October 6th. Yeah, Judge Duty is the perfect judge for this horseshit. <laughs> Yes. On October 6, 2023, and October 25, 2023, plaintiff committed fraud. She lied? When she filed her underlying petition for order of protection and then testified before Judge Duty under the fraudulent pretense that she was pregnant with defendant's twins and that defendant was cyberbullying her by posting her medical records online. To be clear, plaintiff was never pregnant by defendant as they did not have penetrative sexual inter intercourse. Oh. I don't wake you up in the morning. That's what she said. Uh, YouTube, don't demonetize me. I'm reading court documents. I can't control what's in them. Specifically, during a deposition for the paternity establishment matter currently pending before Judge Mata, plaintiff admitted to modifying medical records. She lied. And claimed she had a miscarriage in September predating the filing of the, of the protective order. What? <laughs> That's right. This is unbelievable. So now we're finding out she's gotten her timeline so screwed up that she decided to tell Judge Mata that she would miscarried before she filed for the protective order in which she claimed 
that Clayton was a danger to her and her unborn babies, the babies that she had miscarried or whatever a month before. Wow. Wow. So she thinks it's okay to tell two different judges two different stories. In her own words, plaintiff did change the top of that sonogram from Planned Parenthood to Smile. I added my name in in the in the facility name correct. Exhibit one, pages eighty one and eighty eight. Relevant here. Plaintiff tampered with the same sonogram this court found to be part of the single act of domestic violence required to justify granting the order of protection, meaning she submitted to this court and this court explicitly relied upon a fraud. She lied right to jail, right away. To date, in the contemporaneous establishment matter, plaintiff has provided no verifiable medical evidence to support her alleged twin pregnancy and has admitted that the ultrasound at the core of this court's basis for granting the protection order was de facto fraudulent. Moreover, to date, Every obstetrician and gynecologist plaintiff testified court proceedings and deposition to being seen for her fake pregnancy, <laughs> damn Greg, have indicated that they have no records as she was never seen as a patient. She lied? Startlingly, the source of the sonogram that this court relied on was allegedly from Southwest Medical Imaging, Smile, which has, oh, we missed a footnote. Hold on. She explicitly relied on a fraud through the discovery process. This is footnote number one, a very disturbing hobby of plaintiff modifying, creating documents she purports to be medical records and legal correspondence has been identified. It's a disturbing hobby. Yeah, I'd call it that. I cannot believe the corn jokes are still happening. I'm not in on the joke. Can't you just tell me a timestamp or something? Will someone please tell me a timestamp so I can catch everyone up to the corn joke? Where does the corn joke come in and give me a timestamp and a link? Cause you're just, you're, you're now you're annoying me. Get in under corn troll. <laughs> Get... I'm having chat corn troll problems. It's a minute and 15 seconds into which stream last night on MG law or this morning on DUI guy. guys are killing me legendary racing says watch mg show last night anyone saying to watch dui guy went to bed too early <laughs> like you thanks for the super chat appreciate that it's over an hour of shenanigans okay well we can't catch up to over an hour <sighs> corn troll people corn troll exercise a little corn troll all right Startlingly, the source of the sonogram that this court relied on was allegedly from Smile, which has, independent of plaintiff's admission to doctoring the image, confirmed that there are no records of the alleged sonogram. She lied? Mm -hmm. Further, oh, and now we have footnote number two. For clarity, plaintiff testified on March 1st, 2024, that she obtained the sonogram on July 7th. 2023 at Planned Parenthood in Mission Viejo, California, and then edited medical records to add her name and falsely attribute it to Southwest Medical Imaging. Regardless of the source, neither Smile nor Planned Parenthood have any records for any ultrasound appointment for plaintiff. Well, that's a problem. Further emphasizing the extreme fraud on this court. <laughs> Notwithstanding sharing other sonograms of the alleged twin pregnancy that curiously match up with sonograms and YouTube videos posted from years ago online, plaintiff has now denied the existence of all other sonograms. Exhibit 1, page 86. When confronted with science, <laughs> with science, when confronted with science, and the opaque lack of evidentiary support at the deposition, plaintiff admitted that she never sought OBGYN or related care for the pregnancy, further demonstrating the fraud on this court and in the collateral proceeding.
All right, I'm writing this down. Rosman Ranch <laughs> says it's one sixteen forty, but goes off the rails at one nineteen fifteen. Okay, if we have time after I'm done reading this, maybe we'll we'll go listen to some of that. Is it going to get me kicked off YouTube? Because I really am curious. Plaintiff was never pregnant, and all allegations stemming from the fictitious pregnancy are fraudulent. As a result of plaintiff's gross and consistent fraud, hear, hear. Yeah. Shame. The entire Shame. matter is tainted, as Shame. neither defendant nor the court had a full and fair opportunity to litigate and discharge their respective duties. As for And for this motion, defendant states as follows. Background. On October 6, 2023, plaintiff obtained an ex parte order of protection against defendant, Exhibit 2, and indicated that one party was pregnant by the other. Her order alleged, among other things, that defendant was cyberbullying her on Reddit and posting private and confidential information, including redacted medical history, that he could only have access to because of their paternity case surrounding claim that she was pregnant with his twins. The entirety of plaintiff's allegations in her order of protection surrounds the existence of medical evidence to support her fictitious pregnancy. Fictitious pregnancy should be a band name. <laughs> That's funny. Mm. One of you early in the chat said that someone on TikTok's been arrested for faking a pregnancy. Is that a thing? Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can find it. Is there like a TikToker or something? Four hours ago. New. Let's see. Four hours ago, there was a NKY. What does NKY stand for? It's not New York. What's NKY? NKY woman in jail accused of extorting man with fake pregnancy threats and injuring an officer. Oh, now this is interesting. Hey, look, so people can get arrested for this? They can? Uh, hold on. Maybe. I mean, hold on. Let's read this. What is NKY? Oh, Northern Kentucky. Okay, thank you. Oh, well, are we only arresting black women who do this? Or can we arrest the white ones too? Is that the problem? It's probably because she injured an officer. It probably wasn't the pregnancy extortion, but, but assaulting an officer. That'll do it every time. Uh, Alexandria KY, Kentucky. A, a woman is being held on a $100,000 bond in the Campbell County Jail after she was accused of extorting a man with a fake pregnancy, threatening his relatives and injuring a police officer. Yeah, in my opinion, this is the part right here that got her arrested. I don't think the other things would have gotten her arrested. China White, 32, is scheduled to be in court on Thursday for her arraignment. She's been charged with several crimes. Look at this. Theft by extortion. Stalking. Fleeing or evading police, unlawful transaction with a minor, wanted endangerment involving a police officer, and non-payment of fines. Court documents say White met a man online, and they went on a date in December. Two days later, she told him she was pregnant and demanded money for an abortion. Well, this sounds exactly like Laura's story. The man involved said he didn't have intercourse with White. What? What? According to the complaint, the man gave White $1,200, but she continued to demand more money. She was also accused of using an app called Text Now to pretend to be other people and demand more money for an abortion or someone would hurt the victim. Why did he give her any money in the first place? David Hatter, a tech expert, said people using messaging apps believe they can hide their identity, but their messages can be traced. White was eventually identified. Detectives said White told the victim she was underage and had video of their encounter and would go to the police if he didn't give her money. Well, that is extortion. On March 12th, a Fort Thomas detective went undercover and agreed to give White money. But see, I don't know why it's not extortion to say, um, if you don't date me, I'm going to go to the press and destroy your reputation. Why isn't that extortion? Like right to jail right away. I think it should be the same thing. <sighs> A 
Chad's pointing out she doesn't seem underage. No, she's 32. So she lied about that too. Um, she got records say officers showed up at a local Kroger and white ran away. She got into a running car with children inside during the interaction. A police officer was injured and hospitalized his injuries. If any, weren't listed in court documents, Fox 19 now contacted the Fort Thomas police department for an update on the officer's injuries, but has not heard back. Yeah. You can't hit a police officer with your car and not go to jail. Um, if only Laura Owens had tried that. Maybe she'd be in prison. Documents also said White showed up at a, the victim's home numerous times and demanded money. Yep, that's a crime, but it doesn't seem all that different from what Laura Owens did, except for the hitting the cop with the car thing. I personally think what she did was extortion um, and should be treated that way, but what do I know? Oh, there's more. The corn story is spreading. It's spreading. This morning's Mo in the Morning, 2110 into the stream. Whoa. Should we try it? Let's see. Hold on. Um, so that would be today's live. All right, 2110. All right, here we go. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Do -do -do. Oh, good night, nurse. <laughs> Oh no. Well, there you go. Uh, oh never mind. I have is... been diverted. What in the name of all that is wait, wait. Hold on. What is X Education season four? What even is that? What what? What is what is that? Is that a show? Is this a kid show that I don't want to know about? Oh, no, what is this degeneracy that you people are making me talk about? Oh no. What is this? First of all, what is the show? I don't know what this is. Hold on. Now I have to look that up. You know, you're you're being very unhelpful today, chat. No one's giving me any answers. Uh this is a a Netflix, of course, it's a Netflix degeneracy show. I've never seen this show. I would never watch anything like this because I freaking hate it. I hate how degenerate all entertainment has become. Veggie Tales gone, <laughs> Veggie Tales gone 50 Shades of Grey. You know, this is never going to be part of the Bible story they tell you. Uh, oh, Mo. <laughs> to be fair, okay, so Veggie Tales did have. A toy that made it through development <laughs> at somehow that was a vibrating asparagus. <laughs> Just saying it didn't look right. <laughs> uh, you can now buy the corn cob uh, adult sculptural pleasure item <laughs> from the sexual education season number four. I don't oh, know no. what that show is, but then again, I don't watch shows all that much. Now, I do watch a lot of true crime, which scares Mr. Mo. Any hoozle. You might have assumed the corn on the cob adult sculptural um, pleasure item that was in adult that scene of Netflix's sexual education was a prop. <laughs> but we're here to tell you it is a very real smexy toy that you can that you can actually buy it. You know, see, now I can count on Mo to use all the right words that won't get me yeeted off of YouTube. Isn't she a peach? Has anyone seen Parenthood, that movie um, with yes. uh, Steve Martin Love and Diane Keene, or yes. Kane, I think, where they find her adult sculptural object? And, uh, you know, during a family <laughs> thing, yes. could you imagine if they found the adult sculptural corn cob object? Oh, God. I mean, it's almost as as embarrassing as if, like, say, your mother-in-law was looking for a flashlight. <laughs> and found 
All right. So I see that you're all obsessed now with corn. Shame on you all. Shame on you all. I am very disappointed in you. That's all I have to say. Shame. 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 Put the corn away. This is how you get into trouble with former bachelors. Put the corn husks away. The corn cobs, the, co the husks, put it all away. Shame. 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 All right, let's get back to the document at hand, shall we? <laughs> all right, October 25th. I don't know how much time I have before I have to go help Mr. Fox with the flooded basement. That might be soon. Whew. On October 25th, a contested hearing was held before Judge Duty. <laughs> Duty. Plaintiff testified to having attended various medical appointments to confirm her pregnancy, including the ultrasound appointment for the sonogram at issue and specifically relied on by this court. This was a lie. She lied? As the sonogram was fabricated and medical providers have affirmed the plaintiff never attended any pregnancy-related appointments. The same date the court granted plaintiff's order of protection solely based on the following image posted below, which defendant allegedly posted anonymously on Reddit, which defendant vehemently denies, and plaintiff testified contained a sonogram that she only sent defendant. And, and how do you, by the way, never mind, I, I forget it. That's, I, I get what she's saying here. She's claiming that Clayton posted her sonogram on Reddit, but he says he did not. And she sent that to Dave Neal. She sent it to Reality Steve. And I think she had it on a Dropbox that she sent to a bunch of media people. <sighs> getting distracted by the chat again. <laughs> General T says, might want to think about saving the animals two at a time, Megan. Yeah, I know. It's, it's not good. It's not good. Someone needs to change their YouTube na username to corn. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Plaintiff testified. Yeah. It contained a sonogram that she only sent to defendant. Exhibit three. This is either the same sonogram plaintiff has admitted to changing and that the alleged source of the sonogram has no records. And we have a footnote here we need to get to. It has no records of or one of the other sonograms that plaintiff has testified she did not obtain. See exhibit one. Let's go down and see the footnote again. The source is either Smile, according to the insignia, or Planned Parenthood, who, according to Plaintiff, was the original source. Parenthetically, Plaintiff herself also posted all the alleged sonograms on a public Dropbox on Reddit and emailed the records to various journalists and media. Oh my God. Is there a Pope of corn? <laughs> a corn Pope? I don't want to be that. Whoever it is, it's not me. It's not me. I, I got nothing to do with it. <laughs> There's that great um, scene. This reminds me of, hold on, I have to pull this up. My favorite movie from the hip, my favorite lawyer movie. When he plants um, an adult pleasure device in opposing counsel's trial bag and pulls it out <laughs> mid-questioning. Uh, to prove that you could have something in your bag that you didn't know was there. And the and he pulls it out and he's all, well, I'll see if I can find it. Um, but, but I love how the judge goes, don't look at me. It ain't mine. <laughs> it's not, oh, I don't think it's on here. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. The only from the hip clip that I can find is the one that I have with the judge screaming. Um. Oh, it doesn't look like it's in there. It doesn't look like it's on YouTube. That sucks because that it's so funny. Anyway, uh, that reminds me of that. It's a good, it's a good movie. Uh, all right, where are we at? 
relevant law where not inconsistent with the Arizona Rules of Protective Order Procedure, ARPOP, Rule 2 invokes the Arizona Rules of Family Law Procedure to protective order matters heard in conjunction with pending family law cases and the Arizona Rules of Civil Procedure for all other cases. Here, as the ARPOP does not include rules for requesting a new trial or setting aside a judgment, Rule 85D3 ARFLP and Rule 60D3 ARCP are invoked to the extent not inconsistent. And we have a footnote. Although the hearing for plaintiff's order of protection was arguably not heard in conjunction, conjunction with the family court matter, and the ARFLPs are likely not invoked, defendant cites to Rule 85D3 in the alternative to protect his right to relief. Okay. Under both Rule 85D3 or Rule 60D3, the court may relieve a party from a judgment based on fraud. She lied. Whether previously called intrinsic or extrinsic misrepresentation and other misconduct. Additionally, both rules permit a motion to be made on the basis of fraud within a reasonable time, no more than six months after the entry of the judgment. Fraud, as defined by Rule 85D3, can be either intrinsic or extrinsic, both justify relief from a judgment. Extrinsic fraud is fraud upon the court and concerns the procurement of a judgment. Extrinsic fraud has effect of which prevents a party from having a trial or from presenting all of his case to the court or which operates not upon matters pertaining to the judgment itself, but to the manner in which it is procured. Well, that's interesting. Bates v. Bates. Conversely, intrinsic fraud pertains to matters of judgment itself and therefore is concerned solely with fraudulent conduct that occurs within the proceeding. Robertson v. Teal. Both forms of fraud constitute the fraud for the purposes of Rule 85D. Argument. Plaintiff committed fraud in her October 6, 2023 petition for order of protection. She lied. Plaintiff committed fraud, extrinsic, when she filed her petition, which the court relied on in order to grant the order and falsely claimed she was pregnant by defendant. She lied. In her petition, plaintiff alleged that one, defendant had threatened her since discovering she was pregnant. Two, defendant had posted personal and sensitive information about her because of their paternity case. Three, Scottsdale PD had called defendant. And four, defendant was anonymously posting private and confidential information, including facts about her medical history. And five, plaintiff feared for her safety. All of these allegations are fraudulent. She lied right to jail, right away. Plaintiff was never pregnant. I feel like no one is listening to me reading. All you're doing is telling corn jokes. Like, do I have to pull this stream over? Is anyone actually listening to this? Should I just give up and go clean my basement? You're, no one's listening. No one. You're, none of you are listening to this. It's, it's like it's falling on deaf ears. You're just telling corn jokes. You're, <laughs> I can't believe it. I have an entire audience full of 12-year-olds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. In Levy County, it's definitely Johnny Cracky Corn. <laughs> Jimmy Crack Corn and my sister always says that when she wants to say I don't care. She goes, Jimmy Crack Corn and. It's funny. I just feel like no one's listening. I feel like the teacher who's trying to get your attention. <laughs> I feel like the teacher is desperately trying to get your attention, but there are like fart jokes going on and it's just not, it's not working. You know, this is all your fault, isn't it, expert? Is this your, this is all your fault. You're ruining my stream and you're not even here. How do you manage to do that? That takes a lot of talent. You've ruined my stream and you're not even here. Oh, finally, some sanity. Sanity? What do you mean sanity? Well, let's bring this. Can we bring the chat back in line? They're, they're, they can't get off the corn jokes. Tell me that you are not in on the corn jokes. I am not in on the corn jokes, so. Oh, thank God. All I can tell you is that it involves uh, what Mo in the Deep End would call an adult sculptural sculptural pleasure item. Oh, really? <laughs> and 
And the, the chat's obsessed. It's like being a teacher in a room full of 12 year olds who just, you know, someone told a dick joke and you're trying to get their attention back. And I can't. I don't think they're interested in this motion at all. Items of phallic nature. Yes. I'm going over to Super Chat on Larry's channel. How dare you, sir? How dare you? I have had very few Super Chats. I'm making not even close to medium wage today. If you go send Larry my Super Chats, that's it. You're out of the will. <laughs> You're out. Puzzled Puzzler, thanks for the Super Chat, says, A corn story. This morning's Mo in the morning, 2120 in the stream. Yes, we just watched some of that. Uh, LA, thanks for the Super Chat, says, Megan's hair is distracting. It is? Is it distracting? Is it it's, is it because it's straight? Nick Starro, thanks for the super chat, says Mo needs all the subs, all of them. She does. I agree. Puzzled Puzzler, thanks for the super chat, says, you know the fake fruit bowls that people put out? Be careful with the fake veggies, says Mo. <laughs> as long as it doesn't have lead paint on it, then it's fine. Uh, it's like, yes, it's mass corn hysteria. It is... It's a husk, a husk stereo, if you will. <laughs> I don't know how the expert managed to derail my stream while he's not even here, but I, he's got some talent for he can he can ruin my stream just from the chat. It's incredible, this man. Mm -hmm. This is all his fault, apparently. We have people in a mass corn hysteria in the chat. Oh, you say you're interested in the papers, but then I start reading them and all I see are corn icons and emojis floating by. Yeah, you say that. Uh, Vulpy Fox, thanks for the ramen money. He says, today you get the corn money. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you people. I remember when you used to be able to buy 10 ears of corn for a dollar and now it's like four for a dollar now. Imagine how much the uh, phallic-looking symbol symbolism items dressed up like corn. Imagine how much those cost. I don't even want to think about it. Hey, Joe, thanks for the super chat. Says you're the cr you're the creamed corn of the crop, Megan. Well, now creamed corn has a whole different meaning that I don't want to think about. Dang, the plumber's ca calling. Brad, take over. <laughs> All right, chat. So she was starting to read this uh, document and I was super interested in it yesterday to the point where I was derailing the, the emotional discussion chat. And um, if y'all don't want to play nice with this, then uh, we're going to have a really uh, bad chat. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing my maize and blue, so go figure. <laughs> All right. They're just calling me to tell me again they won't be here till four or five. So oh, of course. how much water do you think can uh, can flood my basement between now and then? Um, it depends. Because it seems like my sump runs all the time. Should I get out the uh, the kayaks? I think I'm gonna need them. Mm, maybe. Mm-hmm. All right, creamed. Cream. So un so unintentionally, I, I was just telling chat. I wore my maize and blue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> D. Robertson says it started on MG Law last night. Yeah, I know. That's what was... I've heard. Vulpy Fox says today you get the corn money. Oh, I got that already. Uh, did you get the ITG signal video I sent you? ITG signal video. Where did An you send IT it? An ITG goatee bat signal video. No. No, where? Where did you send it? When did you send this? Did you send it to my email? You have to tell me. Brad, pay attention to the chat if he responds. I need to know where this was sent. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Was that on Twitter? If it was on Twitter and it's not someone I follow, Locals. it would be in the... Oh, it was on local. Locals? When? Last night? Today? What? I need, I need more guidance. We need answers. We need answers. Hold on. Let me check this, the chat. Uh... Uh, I'm not seeing it. Please tell me where, because that sounds amazing. And I definitely want to upload it and use it because I'm going to need the Brad signal. <laughs> Brad, the Brad signal. The Brad signal is definitely, definitely. Uh, I found it. It's, oh, I did. think it's hill on top. Hill on top. 
Wait, is it hosted? It's, oh, it's a- I found it. I found it. Wait, let's let's see if I can pull this up. <laughs> oh my god. This is great. How do I make it big though? There we go. Uh that's what she said. In right. biggin. In biggin. I have to share this now. I don't want to give away the joke before it's all right. Here we go. Uh locals? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this is funny. It was on the mortgage and I did he gave I us a signal. She's about, though. Will you sign something? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I love it. Oh my god! That's it's pretty good. The goatee in the sky. Oh my god! That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Robert. If I sent you my logo, would you be able to put that on? <laughs> that would be that would be so good. Oh my gosh, Robert! Thank you. That was so good. Tracy Fagan, thanks for the super chat. Says we are lost in the cornfield. Yeah, you children of the corn. That's what you are. I'm calling you the children of the corn from now on. Rogue Mama, thanks for the super chat. Says subscribe to Flux. She needs about two hundred to get to two thousand. Flux is is almost at two thousand subs. Oh well, we that have needs to, to happen. That needs to happen. Yep. She's my internet daughter. I demand that the chat, for all of the bad behavior today, your penance is that you go over to Flux's channel now and subscribe if you haven't already done so. So let me pull up, uh, or mods, if you could help me out with that. I'm going to pull up her. I think it's House of Flux. It is House of Flux. Yeah. Uh, There she is. Yeah, she's at 1.84. Um, so get over there and subscribe. Do it now. Do it now. Here you go. Flux. Robert, hit me up on X and I'll, I'll send it to you. All right. Cool. Ashley Casey, read the papers, but add corn items to your Amazon store and grift off of it. <laughs> you people have problems. Patrick W. Thanks for the super chat. Says this too gets blamed on a turtle, a minister, and a stripper on a corn pole. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the opening of a very good joke. A stripper, a minister, and a corn pole uh, walk into a bar. Higgles, thanks for the super chat. For your efforts, Megan, and hi to all the corn stars out there. Sarah Adams, thanks for the super chat, says your 12-year-old self is, is really who is mad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Trying to get back to this very serious court documents that we are discussing today. Very, very serious. Very serious. I'm big in. That's what she said. Plaintiff was never pregnant. The parties never had intercourse. <laughs> oh, God. You are fake news. Plaintiff has provided no verifiable me- medical records to confirm her pregnancy because none exists. And every provider she testified to being seen by has confirmed they have no records for plaintiff. <laughs> they were like, go fuck yourself. Mm-hmm. But- Go fuck yourself. Um, and ever, uh, let's see, there are no sonograms, no monthly follow-up appointments. There is simply no evidence that plaintiff was ever pregnant and certainly not with defendant's twins. I love how Greg always uses phrases like uh, fictitious twins. Yeah. Or, um, you know, I would like him to at, at least once add the phrase fellatio twins into a, a motion. The fellatio twins. I think there's a good, the fictitious fellatio twins. There it yeah. is. There it is. It's got the alliteration and everything. Oh, I love it. Go shuck yourself. Oh, man. <laughs> MG, you're not helping. Oh, but I love you. All right. Um,. To make matters worse, plaintiff has since testified that she had a miscarriage in September, predating her filing this order of protection. Because plaintiff was never pregnant and could not have been pregnant from fellatio. There it is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And or she is now alleged she miscarried. I bet people in Greg's office fight over who gets to write these. (laughs) 
<laughs> do you do you think that him and Isabel, or is that her name, Isabel, in his office are like, no, I get to write this one. No, I want to write it. No, d- back off. Get off the typewriter. It's my turn. Because, I mean, you, the stuff you can put in these motions, you may never be able to write in another legal motion ever again. When is the next time you're going to be able to use the phrase fictitious twins and fellatio in the same document? Do, they, do you think they do that? Or do they use it as like, if you um, get three cases for the week, then you can write the next motion or something. <laughs> you, use it as like the performance incentive as, bonus. As a performance incentive bonus. I like that. I like it. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to give him that idea. That's a, that's a terrific idea because my God, I would be cackling my head off writing this. Jason Swaby, uh, don't, don't ruin my fantasy of what the world is still like, okay? Typewriter, imagine they're clanking away at a typewriter. <laughs> yes, I do. Because in my mind, uh, I like to believe that we have not advanced past around, oh, 1980, okay? <laughs> when I still had a typewriter in my house with those wonderful clickety clacky sounds. You know, I just have, a, I, there are times when it's like, when I stopped listening to modern music, I don't know when it happened, but I can't name for you one new band, not one that has come around in the last, I don't know, 20 years. Can't name one. I don't know when it happened, but you can name all the K-pop bands that your daughter listens to. Not really. Cause I, I always screw it up and I I call them stray kids (laughs) on the block and stuff. And she doesn't appreciate that or the BTK killer band i don't know i don't i don't know what i'm talking about anymore but i have like a my brain just like cuts off at a certain year and then i can't go beyond that so i just still use words like you know typewriter and make motions to roll the window down like this which we haven't been had to roll windows down like this since 1990 right and how the um Kids don't know what a save file actually is represented by because it's just the save file. Exactly. I still remember that little clip, uh, that little paper clip that used to pop up and help you. Yeah, Clippy. Clippy. Uh, all right, let's see. To make matters worse, because plaintiff was never pregnant and could not have been pregnant from fellatio, And or she is now alleged she miscarried prior to filing the order of protection. The entirety of plaintiff's underlying order of protection is fraud upon the court. Can you imagine the judge who's going to be reading this? Can you imagine the judge? Like, I I, I would love, I actually hope that Judge Duty does write an order about this just to to hear another judge's opinion of this. (sighs) Plaintiff's representation of herself in an ex parte filing as pregnant with defendant's twins schrodinger's twins if you will Mm -hmm. and a victim of defendant maliciously claiming she was not pregnant and posting medical evidence online ostensibly led the court into granting her order of protection wait what what happened hmm? did my page just jump Oh, there it is. Plaintiff deliberately withheld from the court that she was not pregnant and or that she had miscarried the feigned pregnancy. (laughs) How do you miscarry a feigned pregnancy? Hmm. Oh, look who it is. It's Santa Laws. How are you, Nicholas? I'm doing good. I was at the store when all this derailing happened. (laughs) And I I bought a (laughs) six-pack of corn. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I couldn't my help god. myself oh my god <laughs> and you ran home you ran home to get on the stream yes oh I did <laughs> you you are you are just as bad as the rest of them you are this is unbelievable now I have guests on the show derailing with this degenerate corn stuff I do I have to build a, a corn stalk out of lego Oh Flip God! Yes, it. yes. I and here, here's the thing: if you haven't grown up when you're fifty, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's oh actually an God. anime about that, which is even dumber. And I, oh <laughs> my God! Look at this. Kimmy says he got on the stream so fast he didn't even put on his bonnet. I don't even <laughs> recognize you. I don't even recognize you without that bonnet anymore. You've been wearing it so often. You love that thing. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's I know amazing. you love it. 
Yeah, I uh, know. Uh, my my hair is look. Uh, it's so good. I'm is a, it so good? I need yeah. to get one. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. You, you recommended it. You don't even have one. No, I don't have one yet. I, the reason why I recommended it because I know I need to get one, and I've been looking at them. And we were talking about it on a stream about how it's supposed to be really good for hair, and he should try one. And then he did. He was drunk. <laughs> so ordering. you wanted someone to test drive it first before you got it? <laughs> well, no, not not particularly. But I'm a procrastinator. Oh, oh, oh you meant the bonnet. You meant yeah. the bonnet. Yeah, yeah, the bonnet. I yeah. have so much gray, and I'm such a procrastinator that I've been complaining about the grays in my hair for the last like three months, and I still haven't gotten a, an appointment to get it fixed. I'm just. I could I have swore I'm... you got, just got it fixed like two weeks ago. Oh no, it's been a while. Oh, your hair is turning gray. <laughs> But see, the problem is is that (laughs) mine is not going like all at once or I would just grow it out. It's just Mm -hmm. annoying here and there. Like I'm getting it around the sides, like look, just on the sides, but Mm -hmm. not throughout. And so then it just looks stupid. I don't know. I don't don't know what to do. I think you just have to let it grow out with it and then it'll all go with. But I don't know. I'm I'm not loving it. There's a gray, I heard there's gray hair coloring. Yeah, but I don't know. In order for it to for me to do that now, because I have a lot of dark hair still, I would have, have to, to bleach, strip it. I'd have to bleach it out, and then my hair would be all nasty and not healthy, and I don't want to do that. So I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, natural highlights. Natural. Why are we on hair again? How did this even happen? <laughs> At least we're not talking about corn. Okay. All right. I can't believe you bought that and brought it on the stream. Although I, you are very funny. Thank you. Plaintiff <laughs> deliberately withheld from the court that she was not pregnant and or that she had miscarried the feigned pregnancy at the time of the hearing and that she had altered the medical records she alleged defendant was anonymously sharing online, which he vehemently denies. In order to procure a judgment against defendant, therefore, the court's judgment granting plaintiff's order of protection on October 6, 2023, must be set aside. Uh, Because fraud was practiced. Wait, sorry, my eyes are not following along properly because fraud. Did I? Where did I go? Was practiced in the very act of obtaining it, Bates v. Bates. Without this critical material information, neither defendant nor this court had the full and fair opportunity to litigate and discharge their respective duties. Hmm. I'm wondering if Bates v. Bates is a hotel dispute. (laughs) (laughs) We should look it up. Mother, stay (laughs) up! Plaintiff committed fraud, intrinsic and extrinsic, when she testified before Judge Duty. That's really his name, Nick. Regarding a sonogram on October 25, leading Judge Duty to uphold the order of protection. While arguably the entirety of plaintiff's testimony regarding her alleged pregnancy was was fraud, the court explicitly indicated that it was granting the order of protection based on the sonogram depicted in the image inserted above. Uh, Judge, here's what the judge said. The way you publish this photo, it's unflattering. That's my reason for making my decision. What? You can't post it. How is the sonogram unflattering? Well, you'll see. It's not just the sonogram, it's the picture of her. Oh, oh, the. Yeah, it's exhibit three at the very bottom. Yeah. But anyway, how is posting an unflattering photo a reason for a protective order? That, that's yeah. a stretch man that's a stretch don't you think that's a, that's a stretch okay uh plaintiff committed fraud when she testified as to the existence of the sonogram which she has since admitted she altered she lied and that the source of the <laughs> ultrasound either planned parenthood or smile has indicated they have no records of the ultrasound ever taking place because they are fake Plaintiff committed fraud when A, plaintiff testified she sent defendant and a member of the media the sonogram depicted in the issue, in, in the image at issue, but only defendant could have posted the image containing the sonogram. Plaintiff testified that the main image, the one of her pregnant in a bra and yoga pants, had already been published online, but that the sonogram was not. In reality, both were published by plaintiff on Reddit in a publicly accessible Dropbox. Plaintiff testified 
that she sent. Yeah, where's my button? That would that would have been a good place. <laughs> Plaintiff testified that she sent defendant the ultrasound photo and the ultrasound video, and that she had an ultrasound report to accompany the July 7th sonogram. Again, no ultrasound records exist, and there was never any ultrasound. Nope. You are fake news. As the court explicitly stated that the sole reason it was upholding the order of protection was because of the image containing the sonogram, plaintiff committed fraud upon the court extrinsic. Plaintiff withheld to the court that she had doctored the sonogram and that the alleged ultrasound where she obtained the sonogram had never taken place because it is a, it is, it is a fake. Bullshit. Therefore, the court's judgment upholding plaintiff's order of protection on October 25th must be set aside because fraud was practiced in the very act of obtaining it, Bates v. Bates. Defendant is entitled to his reasonable attorney's fees and costs incurred in the entire action, including filing this motion for relief from judgment. Defendant is entitled to his fees and costs incurred as a result of plaintiff's lies she lied? and manipulations by making this malignant filing and then testifying before the court, alleging facts and circumstances now known to defendant to be false and or fraudulent. To be clear, plaintiff was fully aware of the true nature and circumstances underpinning her perju perjurious statements. Oh, that's a good word. Uh, that's interesting. Perjurious statements. And when she admitted medical evidence on October 6th and October 25th, she knew she was not pregnant. She lied. And she had not received an ultrasound for her alleged twin pregnancy. And that the sonogram she had proffered was created by her. Shame. 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 Defendant had to incur significant costs and fees unraveling plaintiff's web of lies, which included having to defend himself against her malignant filing of the underlying order of protection. I like the word malignant. It's a good <laughs> word. Right? It is. It's a good it's word. It's pretty good. Malignant. It's even better than malicious, I think. It, it, it has just a better connotation. Defendant is entitled to his reasonable attorney's fees and costs expended defending himself against plaintiff and filing this motion pursuant to ARS 25-324. To be clear, there is absolutely no suggestion that plaintiff's attorney for the order of protection had any knowledge that he was presenting fabricated medical records. Although plaintiff has a history of fraud, <laughs> the extent... Oof. The extent of damn. damn, the extent of which includes, but is not limited to, the three known count them three known prior victims who have claimed they were subjected to similar false pregnancy. It was not yet fully exposed until well after this protective order proceeding. Wherefore, defendant respectfully requests the court dismiss the order of protection in its entirety with prejudice on the basis of fraud. Grant leave to defendant to submit a child doll affidavit. What's that? I've not heard of that. What's a child doll affidavit? Nick, do you know? You're muted, though. You should unmute your mic. Why isn't, no, isn't it working? There we go. I got it. What's a child doll affidavit? Do we know? I guess we'll, we'll have to Google it. I have to check. No, um, no. I've never heard that. I've never heard of that. It, I see China doll affidavit. Yeah. Oh, maybe he. Maybe it was a typo. Okay. A China doll affidavit is an application for attorney's fees uh, that are required by the court to grant an award of attorney's fees in, in Arizona legal proceeding. Okay, it's an Arizona phrase. That's why we haven't heard it. It's Arizona specific. After a party files for an award of fees, the court then provides the opposing party an opportunity to object. Okay. You have to have, there are certain factors to reasonable billing rates, hours reasonably expended, sufficient detail, contemporaneous records. So there's like a whole process and it's an Arizona specific thing, I guess. Basically, that's what allows them to move forward with uh, not claiming, um, starting their process of getting fees. Right. Because it, they have to list out what their hourly rate is, how many hours they've actually billed right. for it. Right. Award defendant his reasonable attorney's fees. Order such further relief as the court deems just, including a pending 
consequence to the current outstanding sanction request pending adjudication before Judge Mata on June 10th. Ooh, wow, a pending consequence. So adding a consequence to yeah. the pending sanction request in front of the other judge. That could be interesting. All right, so that's the end of that one, the verification. And now we have the exhibits, some of which have been redacted. Okay, so now we have uh, the deposition. And this really is... I would go to the Reddit post for this because okay. they've actually cut it up so that you're not having to figure out which page you're on and which one's next because it goes left up, left down, yeah, right no, up, it's... right down. All right, let's see. Reddit.com. All right, uh, Nick, I'm giving you the part of Corey Keith. Okay. Uh, you'll have a couple of objections to read. I'll take Laura Owens and Brad. You can be Greg Woodnick in this. All one. right. <laughs> okay, Corey Keith, uh, male or female? Male. Male. Okay. He would. He be just says the... objection form like a thousand times. Yeah, he, oh. he no, he objects like three times. He doesn't object that much, does he? I need to get more of my uh, nicotine stuff. I'll be back in 30 okay. seconds. All right, so it looks like, I think this is the one on Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we, you know what I didn't really look over yet were the exhibits. Um, I mean, the exhibits in the depot, they're not on this this filing but these would be exhibits that are attached to the deposition these are no these are exhibits that were shown to laura during the deposition and they refer to them by the different numbers numbers boy yeah i'd like to get my hands on that binder text messages scottsdale police reports reality steve emails video with dad pregnant stomach video more emails crying on Facebook MP4. I got that one. <laughs> I have that one. I like that number 34 is titled Crying mm. on Facebook. The, Steve, the less Steve famous form of dumbass. the less famous variant of Leave Britney Alone. Of of what? You you haven't seen that one? Leave the Leave Britney Alone. Oh, leave Britney Alone, yeah. Oh, yeah. Leave Britney Alone. <laughs> Surprise email and CEO photo, email to Arizona's PC. I don't think that's, no, the, that's Clayton Eckerd 0116 photo. See, okay, Clayton Eckerd 0, okay, an email to Arizona SPC, Colin Scanlon email. I wonder who, I don't know who Colin is. Uh, yeah, that's a new one. It's a new one. Uh, okay, here we go. We're starting at line one. We don't know. Actually, let's start at line three. He. She. Is your neurologist at Barrow? Uh-huh. Yes? Yes. So, Laura, you also told me that you are seeing an online provider, correct? Correct. When was the last time you saw an online provider? I haven't had a video visit with that person in maybe a year and a half or two years. What other providers have you seen? Let's just look at 24 months, the past 24 months. I saw a doctor at Redacted. I don't recall. I saw a provider at whatever. I think her name was Tamara, something with an L. And I think she was, um, she may have been a nurse practitioner I saw a doctor at Planned Parenthood in Mission Viejo, and you said, how long, how long did you, how long? You are doing great. So one of the questions I should, I had ahead of me was you have been to Planned Parenthood in the past 24 months. Yes. And Planned Parenthood you would have been to is the Planned Parenthood Mission Viejo or whatever the branch is there. Yes. When was that? That was in July of last year. July of 23. 23, correct. You, and you have no problems expanding the HIPAA release to include Planned Parenthood Mission Viejo July 23. No. Have you seen any other providers at Planned Parenthood in Arizona? No. Just one visit in summer of 23 to the location at Mission Viejo, yes? 
Yes. Any other medical providers? In the last... 24 months? I'm going to show you Exhibit 9. Exhibit 9 is from Scottsdale Medical Labs. Have you ever been a patient at Scottsdale Medical Labs, laboratory or labs? Yes. This is an ultrasound dated July 7th, 2023. All right. The chat is pointing out that I need to do Laura Owen's faces. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will try. Uh, you're on a yes. What line am I on? One eleven. Yes. Is that your name on the top of, and birth date next to it? Uh, that is my name and birth date. Yes. And this is the ultrasound that you received at SMIL that was presented by Bonnie Slater in the prior proceedings, correct? Yes, it was. This is actually at Planned Parenthood. Okay, I want to make sure I can clarify that. Let's start off with the basics. On Exhibit 9, is this your ultrasound? Yes. Did you go into a facility at SMIL facility because it is earmarked SMIL to get this? ultrasound i did not where did you get this ultrasound planned parenthood in mission viejo so i don't know mission viejo well but this is what you're suggesting is that scottsdale medical imaging has a branch in mission viejo, viejo california no i'm totally confused here i'll give you a chance to explain how there is scottsdale medical imaging ultrasound that you claim came from mission viejo there is not, well, this was the, actually taken in Mission Viejo. This was not taken at Smile. Why does it say SMIL on it? I did change the top of that from Planned Parenthood to Smile because I didn't want him to contact the doctor. I'm showing you real clearly Bates Stamp 0183. It's an ultrasound image that you are admitting to having changed information on. Is that true? Just the top left. Yes, the location. I'm going to ask the question again. Yes. Did you change data on, the, on what has been earmarked as Exhibit 9? She answered the question, Greg. Objection. Form. <laughs> Other than changing the words SMIL on the exhibit, did you change anything? No. All right, Laura, I'm going to give you an opportunity now because we are three years into this and a year into this case. Is this the only document you have altered? Yes. So every exhibit... In this entire history of feigned, of our position, which is feigned pregnancies, this is the only document that you are acknowledging having touched via arts and crafts is Clayton Eckerd 0183, marked for today's deposition as Exhibit 9. Objection form! And Greg, I'm going to ask you, let's keep it professional in the questions. <laughs> Yes, this is the only, this is the only one. And I would hope that the fact I'm admitting that would mean something. Well, it means that you lied in an exhibit. You understand that this is where we go back to this issue of you being able to plead the fifth. You acknowledge you had a medical document that you changed and you're telling me right now that's the only one I have to know about. Yes. What software did you use to change it? Um, Adobe Acrobat. Where were you when you changed it? At my house. When did you change it? Whenever this was, because I didn't want him to contact Planned Parenthood. At what point were you going to tell my office or your own attorney that you doctored a medical record? I mean, as I said, it's my ultrasound. It's it's my ultrasound. Bonnie Platter subsequently withdrew from representing you. No, Bonnie did not. I just didn't re-up the retainer because it was $5,000 gone through in a week. <laughs> this is the line that I saw yesterday that I was just like, oh my God, that is so funny because it means that... <laughs> 
because we always thought that um, like Corey picked it up on um, on like a quick retainer or something, and she, Bon Bonnie goes through five thousand dollars in a week, and Laura's like, "Well, shit, <laughs> this isn't gonna go the way I want it to." If that's even true, like I don't think you can believe a single word that comes out of this woman's mouth. I think she lies about everything. Yeah, right. I'm, I mean, uh, I would assume that uh, Bonnie Plater mentioned to uh, her that I don't want to ask my client anymore because I can't represent you because you're a lying liar who lies. And right. therefore I can't represent you. That's what I Off think you happened. Fuck. Or they say, in order for me to continue with this case, I'm going to need $50,000. <laughs> right. Here, okay, so we're on line 24 and pay very close attention to the next few things because this is going to be very important. You are aware that Miss Platter used this exhibit in your proceedings, right? Correct. It was my ultrasound. I want to show you exhibit 10. I think we have a little technology action here. There's actually no audio on this, but I'm going to show it to you. Video, Video playing. playing. Did you see Exhibit 10, Laura? Yes. That's a video dated September 5th, 2023. Yes. Is that yours? No. I never stated that it was mine. It was. I was asked that by Dave Neal. The Exhibit 10, which is a SMIL sonogram, what's the identification, identifying information there? And redacted. redacted. What's the other information on there? G A equals 17 W O D. So you admit that sonogram exi in exhibit 10 is not yours. Exhibit. Okay. Yes. That's not mine. Okay. If I were to take a look at the at a sonogram of this alleged pregnancy, the only place I would see that from its original source would be Mission Viejo. Wait, are you talking about the are you talking about the video or I'm I'm confused. And that's fair. <laughs> Your testimony <laughs> under exhibit 10 is that ain't you. Exhibit 10 is is that yes, correct. How many sonograms have you had for this alleged pregnancy? One. And where was it? Planned Parenthood, Mission Viejo. So I'm going to ask my question again. If I were to want the original source of the sonogram, the only sonogram that took in a six or seven month pregnancy, I could only get it from the source at Mission Viejo Planned Parenthood. Yeah. And I did go anonymously. Oh, so if I issue a subpoena to them, because you're going to sign the consent when we bring this to Judge Mata's attention, they are not going to know it was you that was there. I self-paid. I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you an opportunity again, because you've got statements under oath that we have to get to from the prior proceedings. You do not have to answer my questions. You can always plead the fifth. Your testimony now is that the sonogram that I just presented to you is not yours, correct? The son the one sonogram was mine. And it came from Mission Viejo, but Mission Viejo is not going to have any idea it was you because you did it anonymously. And then you went back and added your name to it. Objection form. No, I didn't add my name to it. My name was on it. I changed the smile thing. Your name was on it. And I changed smile. Hang on for a second. You just told me, Laura, that you were anonymous at Planned Parenthood. But I changed smile on there. I think I'm confused as to what you're asking. No problem. We'll slow it down a little. <laughs> oh, and can you, are you talking about, can you just tell me what exhibit? Just to be clear, for the record, I'm talking about Exhibit 9. Exhibit 9. That's the one where, that you say that you changed and attributed to another medical provider located in Scottsdale, Arizona. Correct? Correct. And that's SMIL, which is an acronym for Scottsdale Medical Imaging Labs or something like that. Correct? 
Correct. I've gone there before. You were a patient of SMIL. Correct. So when I get the subpoena for the records release from SMIL, this isn't going to be there because they didn't do this test. Correct. Because you just put your name on the test. Correct. This test, according to you, was originated in California. Correct. And you went there anonymously. Correct. And yeah, um, I added my name in the, in the facility name. Correct. So we are changing your testimony. So it's not, you originally said you just changed and added the word SMIL. But now, under oath, you're saying you added your name to it too. Correct? Correct. And your date of birth. Yeah, I changed the top. My date of birth, actually, uh, I think I think they might have had my date of birth. They may have had that on there. Uh, they may have had that. If you were to get the record, they might have my date of birth because they did ask my age. When you submit records to the court, you understand that you're signing a verification with them and that there's an expectation of honesty. Oh, well, yes. And I don't believe this was ever submitted to court. All right. Well, pause, time out. We're still talking about Exhibit 9. She just said, I don't think this was ever submitted to court. Two pages Wrong. ago, two pages ago, he said, you are aware that your attorney, Bonnie, she submitted this. She used this in court, right? And she said, correct. That's my sonogram. So two pages later, she's saying, I don't believe this was ever submitted to court. You got to be kidding me. You you must at, at the same time. Greg has got to be both loving this deposition as it's happening and also hating it because, I mean, you don't. This does not happen very often where someone contradicts themselves multiple times in the same deposition, just sentences away Ooh. from themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it kind of happens once in a while. Yeah, it's obviously you deal amusing. with liars a lot. Yeah, but. Th that's about the. A point where the opposing counsel uh, asks for a sudden uh, pause. Break. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a coffee break, a cigarette break, uh, uh, whatever break. Because we're gonna have yeah. a one-on-one -on -one chat. <laughs> I need yeah. to. I need to have a word with my soon-to-be ex-client. Um, yeah. <laughs> Funny though that Corey doesn't object. He just no. lets this continue to happen. Yeah, and well, it's, and what's happening here is really bad. He's on a 5K retainer and he needs to... Well, no, the, that, that, that was Bonnie's retainer. We don't oh. know what his retainer was. Oh, well, he's on a retainer of sorts. And he, he probably... Speculation. Right about here, he's thinking about, now I need to cover my ass because I'm representing this person... <laughs> and if I don't watch it, my law license be might be on the line here. Mm -hmm. This is true. You are not a nice person. <laughs> 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 what was going through Stay his mind? Stay away from the window. What is going through his mind right then was probably this. I have anxiety over the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Corey. <laughs> Poor Corey. All right. Why is this? <gasps> What did, what did I just touch? Don't what? touch any buttons, Megan. Gosh. Okay. Uh, where were we? Oh, um, uh, 21. All right. I'm not done with Exhibit 9 yet. Your testimony now that we've worked through this a little bit is the entire top section of Exhibit 9 is an ultrasound from Planned Parenthood in Mission Viejo or in California where you appeared anonymously you took that ultrasound and you added your name and a date and information to it the date is correct okay where is the original of this um i mean i just have that i mean i'm i'm sure i would have it on my computer okay what would you have on your computer okay um like the image my photos how did Planned Parenthood California Mission Viejo give you this image? I asked them to send it to me. Via? Oh, the place you went to anonymously? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I actually just took a screen grab of it. 
No, it doesn't look like that. Um, I don't recall. Do they do? I'm not familiar with Mission Viejo Planned Parenthood. Do they do like a medical records portal? No, they did not. Did you walk out of Planned Parenthood with this? With what? Whatever image is that you doctored, that you walk out with it. Well, I didn't. Are you referring to doctoring items on of the top? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I didn't. I didn't alter the ultrasound image. And this is even reviewed by another doctor independently. We can debate that. But this particular image, how did you get it? <laughs> I, I thought I had taken a picture with my... No, I like this part. I, I did this wrong. I... I... I thought I had taken a picture with my phone, but it doesn't look like it was taken with my phone, so I don't recall. So you may have, your position would be that you were in Plant Parenthood, you took a screenshot with your cell phone, and, and then you came back to Phoenix, you used Photoshop to change the caption. I used Adobe Acrobat to change the caption, yes. How would you get me the original of what this was before you messed with it? I can contact Planned Parenthood to see if from the day I was there, if there were records from there. So if you went to Planned Parenthood anonymously, how are you going to get the damn records from them? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, I went there anonymously a year and a half ago. Can I have the pictures again? <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds like Lynette. My mother is dead. My mother is not dead. Yes. <sighs> oh, jeez. So would you be willing to, for my office, sign not just a HIPAA release, but a special waiver that's only required in California because of their confidentiality laws with their Planned Parenthood and privacy so that I could have that original information? Um, I mean... I don't know what rights I would be waiving in California. Well, you want Judge Mata to have the original records in front of her, correct? Judge Mata will see that I was pregnant. I have other pregnancy records as well. This is not a debate. This is this in particular exhibit 9 you have provided and you have acknowledged to Clayton, yes. To Clayton, I've got it too. It's right in front of me. You acknowledge you made changes to this document, correct? Correct. And you acknowledge that it's important that we know what the original of this document to know what you changed. Correct. Because right now, I've got to take your word that it's the original, right? Because there's no verification. Correct. So you're going to work with my office to contact Mission Viejo and get the original source material from their database, whatever it is. So we can see what this image looked like before you, whatever you did to it. Can we agree to that? Like I said, I went anonymous, but I'm happy to help you guys however I can. Why did you go anonymous? Because I didn't want the people to know that I'm pregnant at the time. But Planned Parenthood is privileged. You've been there before. I had been there before, but I didn't want anyone to find out because I wasn't in a relationship or anything. You understand why people may think that you may be lying about this Exhibit 9, right? I do. Yes. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to move on and show you Exhibit 10. Was 10 the video? Yeah, you saw the video in September. The September... Uh, I think we're done. with. I think that's it. That's the uh, end of it. And scene. Yeah. God, good. My face was starting to get stretched. And <laughs> hurt with all those... Oh. I'm getting better at the faces, though, I think. Wow. No, all no, right. No, Nora isn't a, uh, a very skilled liar. Let, let's just say that. <laughs> no, but but strangely enough, though, she's skilled enough to have done this multiple times and kept men in court for up to a year at a time. That's 
it's hard to believe with how bad yeah. she is at lying that she's been able to keep these people in court and cost them mm -hmm. the amount of yeah. money that she's costed and not get any sanctions yeah. or have to pay anybody's attorney's fees. Mm -hmm. The That's funny thing is, outrageous. is the, um, uh, what is it? Greg Gillespie case was only just closed or, um, like two or three months ago, I think. And they had to each pay their own attorney's fees. Yeah, they had to pay their own attorney's fees. The judge was mm -hmm. like, you know, no harm, no foul. And, it, and it's really not fair because mm -hmm. there was a lot of harm and a lot of foul and it was all on her end. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one of the exhibits. It looks like the order of protection against Clayton. Um, the, yeah, this was but, the uh, one. That yeah, but ju just for the record, one of the hardest things to win against is someone who either is or is very good at portraying stupid. Oh, yeah, maybe. Oh, my gosh, you guys, this wasn't the first time I opened this. It, this didn't load and I thought it was redacted. It's not redacted. Oh, my gosh, we get to read it. The Ooh. order, the order of protection. Hmm. Uh, I have to uh, butt off because I have other th other things. Uh, uh, other to... things. It, would it have anything to do with that pack of corn you bought? <laughs> yes. I oh. have butter. I have corn. I have. <laughs> Don't finish that sentence. I'll... Don't finish yeah. that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. right, Jen, right away. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I need to. <laughs> Oh, five, five. Uh, All right. <laughs> Make you sure you me. get over. You're welcome. Make sure you get over to uh, subscribe to Nicholas Starro and Trial Watch. Make sure you get over there. He's uh, he does good coverage of whatever it is he's covering at the moment. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's good. <laughs> when Young Thug actually is in court. <laughs> yeah, somebody. One of the defendants got sick, so now everything is on a standstill again. Oh, wonderful. Okay, yeah. great. Wee. All right, mods, if you could help me by posting Nicholas's uh, link in the chat, that would be great. Have a great night, Nick. Okay, bye bye. See you, bye. Nick. See you. All right, let's look at the. This is so exciting. We get to look at the uh, at the actual thing that she alleged. Okay, let's look at it. Approximate date. It says, "Tell the judge what happened and why you need this order." 6-1-2023, Clayton has sent threatening messages since discovering I was pregnant, such as, I legitimately hate you right now. My hatred will only grow if you decide to put me through all of this. My animosity lasts for a lifetime, and that's not something either of us want to subject ourselves to. One thing about me is when I make up my mind for good, especially when it's rooted in anger, I don't sway. My ever my hate is toward you and you only if you decide to not take plan B and in the wild event that you are pregnant, I would hate you even more. That's a threat. It's not a threat. That's saying I hate you, I hate but you. it's not a threat. Uh, and then on, she says on 921, Clayton Eckerd was the bachelor and has many diehard loyal fans. He and I are involved in a very public paternity case because I went to the press that is being covered by every major media outlet. That you sent everything to. Uh-huh. Clayton posted to his story his to his 270,000 followers to lock me up, which they have. What? They locked her up? Look, look, look me up. Oh, look me up. Okay, which they have. And I have been sent threatening and harassing messages by his followers. And Steve called me a dumbass. I'm sorry. I'm, I let I let it take get take me over. Um, I explained this to him and asked him to take down the post, which he did not, by posting personal and sensitive information about me publicly and without my consent. He has made me feel humiliated and embarrassed. <laughs> 9 21 2023 scottsdale pd officer vince johnson called clayton to explain that what he was doing was harassment in and of itself coupled with the fact that he was inciting his followers to harass me as well despite this call clayton still did not take down the post 10 5 2023 
between 922 and 105, Clayton has posed as several users on Reddit, including silly goose tits, <laughs> gossip <laughs> goose tits, stand between her toes, and others. I'm sorry. The chance is my eyes aren't crazy enough. Okay. Let me try. Wait. Is this wide enough? It's, oh, this is so hard. I can't keep my eyes open that yeah, wide. Don't. I can't. I can't. They're going to like get dried out and my contacts are going to st start sticking. I tried, but I'm going to fail. All right. Uh, he has posted private and confidential information, including facts about my medical history that is known only to him because of our paternity case. This is why it is 100% traceable back to him. He has also been writing defamatory and very hurtful things about me, including comments about how I've gained weight. I am pregnant. How I'm not attractive. How my photos are so poorly edited that it's laughable. How I'm bad at my job. A self-help podcaster. And now my prior abusive relationship, which inspired a TEDx talk, never happened. <laughs> Despite mountains mountains i tell you of evidence he is doing everything in his power to ruin and hurt my reputation <laughs> and as a result of what he has posted i have gotten harassing messages <laughs> that have told me to harm myself as a result of becoming pregnant with his twins i am getting other threatening messages as well and all of this attention from the general public that he has incited is threatening messages as well. It's very much unwanted. As a result of this public shaming, he has caused me extreme psychological harm and disrupted my peace. <laughs> I have asked Clayton to stop the harassment on Reddit and social media so many times, but he won't. I have reported his accounts and posts to Reddit but he continues to write unacceptable, cruel things about me. He has multiple accounts now. And so even if one is blocked, he can create another one. This is literally what she was doing. Yeah, she's, she's, you, the, the right likes to say the left always uh, tells on themselves Projects. by what they, by what they project. And this mm -hmm. is, this is projecting. Like, she's doing, she's doing, because she created all those different accounts to get in touch with him when he started blocking her. As a result of him spreading false and damaging information under pseudonyms, I feel demeaned and humiliated. And like my deepest sense of privacy has been invaded. In addition, he has been in communication with my ex, who I have an order of protection against. And who, you know, there's probably more men in Maricopa County who... who <laughs> Everyone has an order of protection from her. Yeah, there's like less men in Maricopa who don't have an order of protection with her than the ones who do. And who knows he is dangerous. I have asked him to stop talking to him because he will put me in danger, but he continues to communicate with him. 10-6. When combined, all of this has led me to feel extreme anxiety and fear of my safety. I have not left my house since September 28th because of this. <sighs> okay. If you would stop door dashing yourself ice cream and watching movies, you might be able to uh, get out of the house. <sighs> this is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, this is interesting. So Sherry Ferber says... Planned Parenthood Mission Viejo does not offer ultrasounds per their main district number three minutes ago. Oh, very interesting. And I know that, I mean, that's possible. There's different Planned Parenthoods provide different things. And some of them do have ultrasound machines and some of them don't. Some of them do. Um, I was, I remember when they were doing this big push about how they did women's health care and something about mammograms. And I called so many Planned Parenthoods looking for one that did mammograms. And I was, I got a no at every number I called. I'm not saying they don't do them anywhere. I'm just saying that their big push to tell people that they do mammograms for women's health care was probably a lie. I couldn't find one anywhere. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, 
Republican states have pushed for heartbeat bills that require places to show sonograms before um, they go forward with abortions. So right. a number of Planned Parenthoods don't keep ultrasounds because they don't need them. And uh, if they did have them, then they might be um, triggering their customer base for um, by showing them these ultrasounds of these babies. And then they might not get the services that they want them to get. Yeah, and in fact, that's that was her reason for going to California, she said, because in Arizona, they were going to make her look at a sonogram. But, but then why but would she go, go and get the to, sonogram yeah. in Arizona? She, I mean, in California, she did say that. She said that she, she didn't go to the Planned Parenthood in Arizona because she didn't want to see the sonogram. Well, then oh she's God. was that in Greg's case, maybe or not, and not Clayton's. I can't uh, remember because she's she's done this too many times. Well, she was saying here that she didn't want because see, here's the thing: she didn't want Planned Parenthood to give records to Clayton, but Clayton can't request her medical records because of HIPAA. This is so so many lies i don't understand what's wrong with the judges that they didn't catch her before now like what was going on with greg gillespie's judge what yeah. was going on with that judge that he didn't see this because this is so crazy this is this is insane um maria chin chin whiskey thanks for the super chat says sending my first super chat ever to get us on track well thank you for that i appreciate that sarah adams thanks for the super chat says nick is that globe behind you a wine holder i'm sorry i should have read that earlier uh puzzled puzzler thanks for the super chat says not a kernel of truth in her testimony stop it <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Adams uh, Super Chat says Megan your Laura Owens face brings it on home Thank you That's, that's Megan's LO face <laughs> Shizzy Wizna Thanks for the Super Chat uh, Shucks Megan <laughs> What do I need to do to butter you up Bring you some popcorn Can I get a kernel of an idea <laughs> Hashtag corn star Damn it Shizzy Colorado Canadian Thanks for the Super Chat Colin Scanlon, lawyer, specializes in data privacy, security, copyright, internet law, and defamation. Thoughts? Is she getting ready to sue everyone? I, I don't know, but I maybe yeah, I you know, she's very litigious and whatnot, but I think she's gonna have a very difficult time if she tries to sue anyone for defamation. That's all I have to say about that. Duncan Idaho, thanks for the super chat, says this is all really misogynist. Hashtag believe all women. <laughs> Duncan Idaho, thanks for the super chat. Hashtag women never lie. Mm -hmm. Tracy Fagan, thanks for the super chat, says isn't mountains of evidence an Amber Heard statement? Why, yes. Yes, it is. Duncan Idaho, thanks for the super chat, says there you have it. She has literally asked Clayton to stop saying mean things about her multiple times, and he hasn't stopped. The court needs to step in and do something. Yeah, that's literally her entire thing. And the judge gave her an order of protection. I can't even believe it. So he basically said, you can't use your freedom of speech. You can't have your First Amendment because this woman doesn't want you saying mean things about her online. He's like Judge DeThomasis. David Washburn, thanks for the super chat, says, I'll be back soon. I have to pop some corn. <laughs> Chat never listens. They just don't listen. Elsie Merritt, hashtag believe all corn. <laughs> so funny. Oh. Yeah, she may take that case to the Southern uh, District of New York and win a fast billion. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> she, she has to have standing in the Southern District, though. <laughs> she needs Letitia James to take this on. Um, it, it's she's That's not wrong. I mean, that defamation case that... Donald Trump lost absolutely insanity just for calling somebody a nut job. I mean, it's that should lose on appeal. Yeah. The problem is, is it's going to take, you know, two years to get there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see if there's anything else they did not check. So this is interesting. The Brady box is not checked. Defendant owns or carries firearm. Defendant should be ordered not to possess firearms. So as a result of this, he did not lose his Second Amendment rights, which is good. Just his first. Uh, because that would have been really bad. Um, Other requests. But, no cyber harassment or cyber bullying under real name or pseudonyms. Yeah. And. Yeah, it's strange. 
I mean, I don't know how any of this could be considered cyber harassment or cyber bullying. All right. So then this is a minute entry. There is a later at the this end. This was the ex parte that, or no, not ex parte. They, they didn't have a court reporter for this. So they like did it. Um, After the fact? Yeah. A record of the proceedings is made digitally in lieu of a court reporter. Oh, so they just, they, they videotaped it. Right? Is that what that means? I, I don't think they, I think that, Pro eight, this is, it's just a summary of what happened. Okay, let's see. Let the record reflect that the court did not invoke the Brady order due to the fact that it is still undetermined if plaintiff is pregnant with defendant's child. <laughs> so the court knew. Scroll the up. Court, what, was, what? What's the data? 1025. That was the 1025 so yeah, hearing. Yeah, this is the... So the court recognized that it couldn't even be proven if she was pregnant or not, and that there was a big question about it, and they still allowed this? Why not just say, listen, you have a week to get me, uh, sign this HIPAA release, go to your doctor, and get me proof that you're pregnant. You have a week, and I'm not going to do anything until I see that you, that, that actually is the truth. Was 1025 she, the when they did all the Ravgen stuff? or No, no, no. 1025 is the date she filed for the protective order. Again, after she claims she had a miscarriage. Well, but that, but that's where her, her testimony lines up, is that she's, she says she went to a doctor that said that she must have miscarried one to two months prior. But... But she didn't know, but she did know. Yeah. She then testified that she passed two sacks. Yes. At the time of the miscarriage and took photographs of them and talked to a telehealth medicine provider who told her that she miscarried and she was fine and she didn't have to go to the hospital. I'm sorry, but I'm starting to sound crazy talking about that. I sound crazy. <laughs> I can't even believe the words coming out of my mouth because I sound crazy, but this is what she said. This is her testimony. No, th this makes no sense. And I'm tired of being gaslit by this woman. I am so tired of it. All right. Here's exhibit three. This is the picture that the judge decided was unflattering. And so she deserved an order of protection. Keep in mind, she posted this to Dropbox publicly herself. And someone on Reddit reposted it with the title, how to win the scariest costume contest shit post. It's a spirit costume with her picture photograph or photoshopped on it with her, this is the one she released of her sticking out her belly. Anonymous woman costume includes sports bra, leggings, belly bump, unbrushed wig, and real sonogram. <laughs> this is the post. So now, uh, Laura, by the way, if you thought that this was an unflattering picture and you went and got a fraudulent uh, protective order to keep it from from people being able to see it. That was a big fail because mm -hmm. now it's in another public document that is completely accessible by anybody and can be read and looked at online. I like the unbrushed wig part. That is very funny. Reddit is gloriously glorious. I agree. Ghostery. <laughs> that photo makes her look fat. <laughs> look, fat. Look, here's the deal. <laughs> Flux right. says, I can't play Minecraft anymore without hearing the fox and thinking someone just joined the fox den. Not enough hair talk today. I, we did. You missed it. Maybe you weren't here. Maybe you weren't here. Uh, Duncan Idaho, thanks to the super chat, says, oh, damn, I didn't know the judge actually gave her an order of protection. Damn, that kind of ruins the whole joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, Wizzy Wheels, thanks to the super chat, says, happy hump day, Megan. Right back at you. Wizzy Wheels gifted a Fox membership. Thank you. Welcome to the Fox Den, whoever got that. And I'm never going to be fast enough to actually know who got them. I just, they, they, they disappear. So I'm sorry, but congratulations. Eric to Bish. Oh, excellent. Uh, oh, we got that one already. Flux. Duncan, Idaho. Thanks to the Super Chat says if she passed two sacks, you can be damn sure she'd keep them and make them into some kind of shrine. I called the yes. Oh, that's gross. That would be horrible. Oh, I think we're at the end of this. Yes. Yeah, I think, I think so. Anything 
else? Nope. Okay. All right. Well, we did it. We got through it. And uh, that's good because I have a lot to do today. I've really got to go down and check on the basement because it's been pouring water this entire time and see if I, <laughs> if there's anything that I can do to help uh, bail, uh, maybe bail some water. Yeah. I should probably go and do that now. And I have to get uh, the today's episode of Fox Den Daily up. I have recorded it. I just need to edit it and I will get it up. Woo. But yeah, I'm behind this week on all that. So, but it will be up soon. So stay tuned. And if you're not following Fox Den Daily Almost. on all those, yeah, Fox Den Daily asterisks. If you're not following that on uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Amazon, you need to do that. Why aren't you doing that? You need to do it now. Please hit that like button. Let me see if there's anybody I can redirect you to who's streaming right now. Let's see. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Which one of these lucky people gets my redirect? <sighs> Is nobody streaming that I know? Huh. Hmm. Oh, Recovery Addict is live. He is streaming the AZV George uh, Allen Kel Kelly, the Mexico border shooting trial. So Alrighty, I'll, send you, I'll send you guys over there. Um, but before I do that, Tina P, thanks for the super chat. Long time lurker. Thanks for the laughs, tea and hair talk. Well, you're welcome. And thank you very much for the super chat. I, appreciate I was going to bring in a different subject instead of hair talk because, uh, my wife went to the store and bought Skippy peanut butter. So I was going to have the, um, the ultimate peanut butter discussion because most American families buy GIF. But apparently there's other peanut butters out there and some people prefer their peanut butter sandwiches without Jif. I buy the Aldi generic brand. Mm. You know, if you want to keep streaming, you're welcome to. I can just leave. <laughs> you want I'm to not, just keep going? But then I got to read your super chats for you right. while you're gone. Uh huh. We can keep this stream going all day long if you want to work for free. I'm I'm good with it. We, yeah, you can yeah. On Twitter, she says, well, or no, it was um in chat yesterday. It was like, <laughs> oh, well, Brad, you're fired. And I'm like, great, finally, freedom. I can freedom. go. And then, and then she's like, no, get back here. You're still you're still working. Well, it just seems like you have more things to say. And if you have more things to say, you're welcome to stay here and say them. Since you don't have your own channel, you can just well, you can technically just I do. I just don't do anything with it. This is true. This is true. You're not doing anything with it. You should get a Streamyard account and and uh, start. I already streaming. have one. Oh well, then you should you should simul stream this one over there on your channel. Keep going. <laughs> and then take your super chats with it. <laughs> well, if they send you super chats, then they're yours. See how that works? Yeah. Actually, Maybe I don't think do I it on your channel. Actually, I don't think I can because I'm an admin on yours, so I'm not a Oh yeah, you're not logged in as uh, uh through the other way. We'll have to play with that. So Brad and I are trying to figure out how to get uh my Oculus to work and stream the Oculus so that I can stream some of my Beat Saber playing right. because it's it's hilarious and kind of medium good. Um, but it's also good exercise and I like it and I think it would be fun. Um, however, oh, Sarah Adams says Megan is giving Brad tech advice. The world is upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything I said was probably not true. So, and he did you try that. the, um, which um, page that I had sent you? No, because you sent it on my text on my phone. And now because I don't have a Mac. Computer of course. Here, yeah. I have to copy the link and then like email it to oh, myself. Oh, 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 oh. Um, check locals. We updated the 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 Brad signal. <laughs> All right, wait. Where is it? Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, let me share this. How do I? How do I make this big? Uh, you. This is so fun. Press play to start, and then there should be right. a, a big and there we go. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Wait, no, go back. 
mortgage. And I did. He gave I us a sign. She was talking about, though, will you sign something? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I probably would not. Um. <laughs> This is so funny. I love it. I love it. I'm going to have to figure out how to download it and upload it to my stream yard. Yeah. Content. Oh, okay. This is good. This is very good. All right. Um, stop. Okay. <sighs> Megan needs to add corn cobs to the poop shack. Oh. Oh, Lord. I don't know. I don't know about you people. I know my house is about to float away. I haven't been downstairs yet. Like, I don't even want to go. I'm very, I'm very concerned about what's going on down there, but I do need to go. All right. We're going to end this show. Woo. This is how it goes. Uh, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going to go do the rest of the stuff, whatever it is I have to do today. Maybe I'll do a cooking stream later if I figure out what I'm going to make for dinner locals and i also need to come back and do like some more reading of iron 44 we need to do chapters i think seven and eight now we're on um so yeah stay tuned make sure you're following me at locals meganfox.locals.com where you'll find out all of the fun things that i'm doing brad thanks for showing up and doing the dramatic reading with me today that was a lot of fun no worries lots of fun Lots of fun. And thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thanks for all your super chats and likes and support. And go and tell Scott over at Recovery Addict that uh, I am sending you over there. Tell him that uh, you're rating. And be good over there. You know that that chat is a little more controlled. Don't embarrass me with the endless corn jokes. Don't make yeah. Scott find out mm. what corn is about. No, don't do that. He's an innocent bystander in all of this. Do not do that to him. Do, uh, now I'm worried about even yep. sending them over there. I, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> but now I'm very worried. I'm going to have to apologize to Scott ahead of time because the moderators are going to be like, what the hell is going on with the corn emojis? Chat, you better not. You better just keep it, keep it in your pants. Can you do that for just, you know, a small stream? I have faith in you. I think you can do it. Don't disappoint me. I was lost. My world is near its end. I almost felt my head is full of a million choices. I am alive. I'm not here to pretend. I love my friends. My heart is filled with a million voices. Oh. In my heart, million voices Come next to me, my friend, embrace the sky I'm not afraid to fly It's not the time to say goodbye I don't want to say goodbye Say goodbye